Hello and welcome to the script case video. Today we will be having a look at how we can construct or develop an inventory management system within script case, during which we will see some of the new features as well as the capabilities of script case. And at the same time, we'll see how fast it is to develop very basic systems. So first of all, let's have a look at what we will be putting together today. And then we will have a look at the database and then of course start developing the platform. Okay, so we have with this platform that we will be developing today a security system with a login page. So you can see here we can log in, we can create new user accounts as well as forget uh, the password. We can see and hide the password within the field. And basically we can customize also the information here as well as the background and so on. So there are some of the things we will be doing today. If I then log into the system, we can then see within a dashboard, within the current dashboard, that we can see the list of coordinators as well as a list of employees. Now, the dashboard does custom is customized depending on whether it is an admin user or whether it is an, um, what do we have here? We have uh, coordinators. So within the platform, it is a group user security where you have a group of administrators, a group of coordinators, and a group of employees, which are then basically the warehouse staff. So within this, then you would then manage your staff, your, your warehouse content, where you can then move items, your products, basically. You can manage your products, manage your warehouses, manage your brands, make warehouse adjustments, as well as adjustments to the inventory, view some basic reports. And within that, we have some basic settings for the brands, countries, manufacturers, and we have then also the admin area where we then can see the users, employees, coordinators, as well as the security management. So this is everything we will be putting together today. We have here also a dashboard and also the exit button. So within this platform, if I just uh, scroll around, there are some applications which are not working because the security in this is open. So I, if I, for instance, come here to warehouse adjustments, I receive an error message because in general, when I launch this application or this project, this page would not be viewable by administration as it is only required by the warehouse coordinators. So there is uh, some customizations here for the different applications groups can use. So this is something we also see during the development of this project. We have then the list of employees, uh, the list of coordinators, the complete security where we can then manage the applications as well as the application rights. So this is then generated by Scriptcase. And then we will also make some customizations to allow for the further groups, which we have here, as well as then the dashboard. So then we have then the basic settings where we have then the brands, countries, as well as manufacturers. For products, we have warehouses, brands, and also the products, which then we can actually view products add new ones, and also move, move them around within the warehouse. Okay, so with this, there is a database. So if I log in here to my PHP my admin, and we can check out quickly the MySQL database that we will be using today for this project. So if I come here to designer, and here I will just adjust the, the layout of these so they can be viewed better. So we have here a view, we have here another view and another view. So these three specific tables that we have within the database, these take data from the tables that we have and present them within specific views. So we will be using these within the project and that will then allow us to make adjustments within tables that will then be combined and displayed accordingly. So we have then also a table for warehouses, all of the items, the measurements, so that would be bags or containers. Uh, the identity docx country, so documents that are required within the specific country. We have then auto items within specific warehouses and the quantity and so on. So we can keep track of where items are. We have the table for inventory adjustments for each warehouse. We have a country table. We have an adjustment table. We have a table for the coordinators as well as also the employees. And then also for brands, manufacturers, and then we also have a table for the transfers. So within this project, you will be able to manage the um, 
manage, manage the products that you have within your warehouse, move them around from warehouse to warehouse, and manage your staff that you have, as well as the coordinators of each warehouse, as well as then the employees. So this project as we have here, it is very basic. Um, it is basically just to show, again show you the capabilities of script case as well as how fast it is to create applications, projects within this platform. Okay, so the project that you will then have available within the description below, you'll be able to download them. It will be in two files. So within the single zip file, once extracted, you will have the project, which you will be able to import as well as the database with the tables. Now the database is translated from Spanish. So some of the details within the tables is still in Spanish, such as the brands and so on. So we see here the names, the warehouse name, city of Mexico, Buenos Aires, and you know, as it goes on here, as well as the new brands, these are all in Spanish. Okay, so the majority of these I did not change and left them as they were. Okay, so the purpose of that is also to show the capabilities of the script case when it comes to multiple languages and UTF support and so on. Okay, so if I then come back into script case, we will then start by creating a new project, add the database, and then start creating each of the applications which are required for this project. So if I start then by creating a new project and then select create a blank project. So for the project, I can add, first of all, an icon. So I'm going to add an image here. If I come here to my public images and general images, I have some images here which I can use. So for the warehouse, I will use here this one, deliver items, and then select and selected. And that way, the project will display this icon at the front. And then we will give this project a name. And I'll call it warehouse management. We can also include a description as well as additional project information. So I will go next. Now these details can also be provided later as well as updated. And so, okay, so we have now the database selection. So I'm using a MySQL database. We can use Oracle, MySQL, Postgres, uh, Fiber, DB2, whichever you like to use. And cloud services are now also available. So we could use Google Cloud or Amazon RDS or Oracle Cloud to store our database if we wanted to. So I'm use, developing this locally and using MySQL. Now Scriptcase does also provide the capability of using multiple databases. So we could even link up one of the cloud databases with a local one. So once we have the database connection uh, settings available, we need to specify the server host name. As I mentioned, it is local. So I'll leave it as 127.0.0.1. We can select the driver, so we can use PDO or SQLI. We specify then our username and password for the database. Now, my database doesn't have a password, as I said, it's local, so I'm just gonna go list databases. And then now here, I will select the database I want to use. So here I have DB inventory, so I'll select that, test the connection and connection success. So I will go ahead and go next. Okay, so now we can select our languages. Now, as I mentioned, some of the data or content within the tables is in Spanish. And if we come back here to the project, we will see that we don't see any issues here with the content. It is displayed all correctly. So the, um, the characters that are used, for instance here, if I zoom in there slightly, we can see here the E, this is typical to Spanish, and this character then will not be displayed correctly. So for that to be displayed correctly, we change here the character set, and I will use Unicode UTF, which then accepts all characters. We can add more languages if we please. So I can go ahead here and say, for instance, add Spanish or French or German, as well as then define the regional settings. So I will only be applying English, so I will go ahead and click Next. So the next option is then the themes. So here I will go ahead and use one of the new themes. So I'll go here, the Guava. Select that as my default. I will remove the sweet blue, as that will then take up space within my deployment, and click Create. Okay, so the default interface of Scriptcase will now present you the option to create a new application. So if I come here to Home, we can see I have no applications created. It is a brand new project. And the default setting is then to present us this. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close this. And the first thing I'm going to do is check out the default values for the project. And what this will do is make sure that everything I set for specific applications will be applied throughout the project. So for instance, if I come here to grid, I can specify here the width of the grid, the table unit, uh, the tab group, the records all. So I always make sure I have all in here also. We can specify passwords and change other alignment options within the table as well as the toolbars. And that will then all be applied throughout the entire project. So this can be applied for not only the grid, but the form, the control application, search application. So each individual application that is possible to be created within Scriptcase. We can adjust them all here. And then those settings will be applied throughout my entire project. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead down here and go update. And this will then provide you the possibility to modify the project as you please. Okay, so back on home, again, coming home, I will, will be presented with the new application option. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close that and come here to my root folder. So here I will create a new folder and I'm going to call this one admin and click create. Okay, so I have the new application again. So again, I will close this. And what I will do this time is I will come up here to application and batch applications. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select some of the tables, which I want for the administrator. So here, for instance, I want the table adjustment, table countries, identity docx country, the warehouses, Oof, and then we also want the manufacturers. The brands. Uh, items we will create later. So let's create those first of all. So I go there next. So now using the batch creator, it will automatically link the grid and form application. So when we view here within the main project, when I create this grid for brands with the batch creator, it automatically creates the form and adds the add new record possibility. So then this form is then also created and directly linked to this grid application. If I create the grid independently or separately, then I would need to create that linkage between the two applications, which is something we will do shortly with the items. Okay, so for now we have here a form and a grid for the adjustment table, a form and a grid for the brands table, a form and a grid for the countries table, again for the identity X document, the, the docx country, manufacturer, warehouses. Okay, so I can adjust the form names here if I wanted to. I'm going to leave them as default within a grand, a larger project. I may want to change them. And at the same time, it is important to note that you can change the names or labels of forms as well as grids within script case and you can update those and then script case will automatically adjust the linkage between each application that is then indicated within say the grid or the form so then the name will automatically be updated within associated apps okay the only time that doesn't happen is when you hand code within the applications using the events and so forth so in, thus, in such cases, you would need to make those adjustments manually. Otherwise, you can change the name from form TP adjustment to just adjustment form or however you please. And it would update the grid and any other linked application accordingly. Okay, so we can now here also select the type for each application, whether for each form, sorry. And here we can select whether the form should be a single row, multiple rows, editable grid, or an editable grid view. Now each of these provides you different possibilities for the modification and insertion of data within your table. So the single row will display a single form. The multiple rows will display the form in a list manner with the fields going off to the right, which can in some cases be a little too much. So depending on the form, whether you want to apply that. The editable grid will apply something similar, but it will not 
display the form values um, as boldly as the multiple rows. So it is a little cle uh, a cleaner view. The editable grid view provides the same as the editable grid, but with lockable features. So basically when you want to update something, you need to click a button, then the fields become available, and then you can update it. So once you've selected the type that you want to apply, we can then go ahead and select to generate the source and also to edit if we wanted to open all of these applications. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and show you that also. So then if I now go finish, it will now generate all of these applications for the administration. And as you can see, as the applications have been generated, script case opens them so that we can now go ahead and edit them as we want to. So we'll really quickly make some adjustments to each of these tables as well as the forms, preview them, and then continue on with the next parts of the project. So we have here the grid warehouses. Okay, so I will first of all disable the detail, summary, and chart. We won't be needing those. We'll also disable the search. We won't be needing those either. And if I now go run, we can now see the grid as it is, per default with those elements disabled. So the search button is gone. We do still have the quick search. The add new button is here, as well as the edit option for each of our items within the table. And each of these grid applications, which we have just generated, so the adjustment, brand, countries, uh, docx country, manufacturer, and warehouses are very similar to this, just with the tables um, with different names, as, and of course the data being different. So the rest of this will be the same. It will have the add new button, We'll have the columns sorting export and the quick search. And then we have our bottom toolbar here with our counts and navigation elements. Okay, so now within this application, we could then go ahead and make various other adjustments. I'm just gonna do some very basic ones and that would be here, remove here the ID warehouse, display maybe the primary warehouse and then maybe the country ID. So for the country ID, if I view this table here, the field, we have here the field country ID is an integer. And I will apply here a lookup method. And that will then come here and check the countries table, display the country field. And if I select the table and then run that again, we can see then the fields would have slightly changed. We now have our Mexico for the country ID, primary warehouse, we need to change it also. So let's go ahead and quickly do that, primary warehouse. If we come here, look up method, if I go create select, and select warehouses, warehouse name. And again, I want to select the connection, run that again. And now our warehouse list will have the country the warehouse name twice, the primary, as well as the actual warehouse name, phone numbers one and two, and the address. So now we could actually group this now. So I set static group, I set new group by, and here what I would do is I will set this via country, and then to totals, just the record count. Summary totals, record count. And here, country. Okay, so once we have that applied, then come back here to settings, automatically saving the data. Notice that each time I change, I'm automatically saving my changes. So I'm not constantly checking, clicking a save now button. For the group by, we can now organize the group within the settings. So I could add further groups here, so say one more, and then add them by primary warehouse. I'll come back to settings again. And here now, I can then adjust country being first or primary being first. Let's go ahead and run the grid application. And we can then see now the static 
organization by country. And then what we want to do here is for the country, we want to adjust the field for the country ID. And again here we use a lookup, checking again the countries table, display the country name. And I will also then do the same for the primary warehouse as that was also indicated as a number. Warehouses, warehouse name, yes, set the connection, and then run this again. So I now have the country name displayed, and then when I change to the warehouse, so I come here to primary warehouse, apply, I will now have warehouse, and then the country, the primary warehouse being the specific primary warehouse assigned to each of these warehouses that we have here. Okay, so now that this is then the first grid done, let's have a look here at the form. If I go then add new, so for the form, we need to change here the drop menu as well as for the primary warehouse. So let's go ahead and apply that once we get to the forms. So here, the grid, let's close the warehouse. For the manufacturer, I'll do the same. So we'll search, detail, summary, and chart. Save that. And here for the grid, let's run it and have a quick look. We have here the ID and manufacturer. So if I come here to edit fields, we don't really need the ID to be displayed. We can just display the manufacturer name. Okay, so that's another grid done. Complete and the add new. We have then add new. Okay, so if I then go ahead and close this grid, we can quickly apply the same to the next grid application. Run that also. Now here we can then adjust again the fields. So a quick look, we have that ID for the country edit fields and check out the fields. So here we have country documents. So we need to adjust these two. I will remove this one. Come here to the field, I'll we'll remove it, but hide it. Come here to ID country. And again, apply here an automatic lookup for the countries. Choose the connection, run that again. And we have then the correct the country with the documents. So I'll just quickly adjust those two fields. So let's put the country first and then the document. And then we can now see the document requirements per country. So in Peru, you need these specific documents. In Colombia, you require these specific documents. And then we have that also for the Republic of Dominica, Mexico, and Argentina. And we can continue to add more countries in here. Specify the country and indicate the document. And they are then also stored. Okay, so then we can go ahead and close this grid. We then also have our countries. So again, when you search, details, summary, and chart. And let's quickly go to the edit fields. We have the ID country, so it's only two fields. I'm just going to go ahead and hide that one, save it, come back here to country. Now it should be a text field. Let's run it and just make sure. Okay, so that's great. And we have there then the edit, functional, and again the add new, so we can add new countries. Okay, so the country list should really be complete, but it's there. Okay, so we have now brands. So I'm going to again go ahead and remove the search, detail, summary, and chart. I'll go ahead and run the grid application. And we have then a list of all of our brands that are then used within our warehouses. Okay, so if I come back here in the grid and then edit fields, I'll hide the brand ID, the manufacturer, we have here the manufacturer ID, the image and brand. Let's have a quick another look at that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the image to the left. 
have then the manufacturer and then the brand. Okay, so now in fields, I come into manufacturer ID, select the lookup and select the manufacturer table. Manufacturer and then database. So I'll save that, give a quick peek and see what it looks like. Okay, so we now have our image, manufacturer ID and brand. So it's kind of not very nicely aligned here. So let's change the alignment for these other two fields. So we have here manufacturer ID, it's right aligned. So let's change that to left, left, and then brand, left, left, run. And then we can have that aligned a little nicer. So here the image is actually so let's come here to then to the image. And what we can then do is apply the default height and width of the displayed image. And I'll say 250 by 250, like a run. And now the images will be displayed in those dimensions. And that is a little cleaner and tidier. We can actually do them a little smaller. So let's say 140, let's say 120, and 180. Okay, so where the images go, they will, and it gives a slightly different effect. So of course, we can adjust the image sizes and force that within the applicant form. So I come here to brands, for instance, and add new. Within here, the image upload, we can specify that the images would be adjusted to that specific size if we wanted. In this case, I'm not going to, going to apply that, but when we get that, I'll show that, and then we can you can actually apply that yourself within the project that you've downloaded or within your own project. Okay, so we have here, I go cancel. This grid is pretty much ready. So if I come here and we can then close the brands grid, we have then adjustments. So here again, remove the chart summary detail and search. And we can just quickly run the grid again. And we have some very easy adjustments here. So the adjustments or reasons for adjustment to stock are indicated here. So if I come in here, we can then again access the fields, remove the ID, run that. And again, we have another grid ready to go. Of course, for your own project, you may want to make further adjustments. For myself, for instance, I would remove here the space all the way around. And to do that, for instance, we could come here to the settings and here I would then set margin zero 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 and that would then remove the white space all the way around this uh, alternatively you could of course also apply that within the theme itself but I like to apply that within each application to have some further customization and options okay so now if we then continue and we could then close this grid application and now we can then start to work on the forms so for the first form, we have here the warehouses. So if I run the form, I can see here the form as it is in default. So we have here the add new, save, delete buttons, exit buttons, quick search, go to the navigation, as well as then the record count here. So I can navigate around here each of the warehouses. We have the warehouse phone numbers, address, email address, and we have two fields here which require some adjustments. So let's go ahead and make some changes there. So we have, first of all, the primary warehouse. So I'll come to edit fields. First of all, I will hide the ID warehouse. Click save for the primary warehouse. Again, we can go ahead and use a select here. And then I will go ahead and change for the primary warehouse. Selecting the warehouses table warehouse name, we we'll use a title, and then also select to choose the connection. So we also have the country ID. And then here we want to apply the country name. So we select the country's table and country as name, choose the connection again. Now we can use select to use title or not, the choice is yours. 
I will do so and run the form application again. Okay, so there's two more adjustments I want to make here, and that is first of all here, the primary warehouse and country. I want to move these up. And then what we want to do is add some Ajax in between these two fields here, so that when I select the country warehouse, it automatically displays warehouses within that country. So now if I then access the form again within script case, come here to edit fields, and I could just drag and drop them here. I could also go and access here the fields positioning and do the same. So I come here, move the primary warehouse up, the country up, save that. And we can see here the fields have already adjusted here in edit fields. We see that also. Okay, so now here within the country ID, we have here the select of country and we want to use here Ajax to reload another field. So before we do that, we want to come here to the primary warehouse and we have here the warehouse table. So I'm just gonna quickly have a look at it. We have here the ID warehouse, warehouse name and country underscore ID. Okay, so we need to select ID warehouses from TB warehouses where, so we can apply our where statement here where country underscore ID equals, and then we can include our field variable, and that is then country underscore ID, just as our field here. Okay, so that's saved. Now we want to apply the Ajax in between that, so the run didn't do anything, so that's why I didn't show anything now. We now need to select here, use Ajax to really reload other fields. So I check that, and then here, I will select the primary warehouse and click on, and then run that again. Okay, so now within the form, if I now, for instance, go add new, I can select here a country, let's say Bahamas, it would load primary warehouses. So I need to select here a country that we have. So let's have a look <laughs> what countries we have listed in here. We have Mexico, so okay, if I go and add new, and let's select here Mexico. We then have here loaded the warehouses that are available within Mexico. Okay, so we can then apply the warehouse name, phone number, address, email. Now the address here, we may want to adjust this field also. If I come here to address field and then change that to multiple lines. So I'll give that four lines. So we'll run that again. Now the address will change slightly. Put a larger field there. And now for the email, let's come here to email and we want some email validation on there. So if we change here the field type to email, it will then ensure that email addresses are only entered into this field. Okay, so we could add further validation onto the phone number if you wanted. Um, as well as adding further options for the warehouses and so forth. Again, this is a base project for you to work with and make those adjustments yourself. So this form is then pretty much ready. So if I then go ahead, I'll save that just to be sure, and I'll close that one. So the next form is then for the manufacturers. So this was a very basic form. We have here then edit fields. Here I will just drag the ID manufacturer down. Go ahead and run the form. And then this one should be pretty much in order. So the next up. Now, actually for the manufacturer, um, in most cases, personally, I would uh, create just a editable grid view instead of having a grid and a form and just have an editable grid view managing that instead of having two applications uh, for base, base items, such as the manufacturers, even brands, for instance. Okay, so if I'm going to go ahead and close this one. Then we have the identity docx country. So if we run that, we have here the ID, the document required, and here the country needs to be adjusted. So here, if I come here to edit fields, first of all, uh, drag that one out of the way, move the country up. And then here on the field, we can then again apply or adjust the lookup settings. Yeah, again, select the table countries, the field country, choose the connection, and again, run the application. Okay, so another form is done. 
we select the country, we can add a document, and we can store our document details per country, like so. So again, I'll close that one, and we have now the form TB countries. Now, I believe this was also a basic form again. So I have the country ID and the country. So this one we can pretty much leave as it is. So I will do so. I'm just going to close that one, and then we have brands. Okay, so let's run this one. We have in the in this form an image, the brand name, as well as the manufacturer here. So we need to adjust the manufacturer. So we come here to fields, manufacturer ID. And here, select the table and adjust the MySQL selection. We'll choose the connection. We'll also use a title. So when new data is added, the manufacturer is not automatically selected. Now I do want to adjust the fields here. So I will go to fields positioning, move the manufacturer up then have the brand and then the image. So I save that. And then here, I actually the ID brand is one field I don't want. So I save that again. I come here to edit fields. And again, we can see the ID brand is now adjusted and not displayed. The manufacturer, brand and image. So again, if I run that, we have then the manufacturer ID the brand and the image. And as I mentioned previously for the image, we can also make adjustments so that the image height as well as the width are then always defined. So here, for instance, I could say that the height will always be 160 and the width will be 120 or however it was within the, within the grid application or how you want it within your own project. And then the images will be then adjusted and displayed accordingly. So for the image, we can also make further adjustments. We are actually storing the image within the database. We can change the, the icon for the upload area. So here we have the icon here. Now, one thing I do like to do here is actually increase the size of this. So here it is a little complicated to do because it forces you. So what I'll do is if I copy that and then elsewhere, I can adjust the font awesome icon. And then I can just copy that from there, paste it in here, run this again. And the icon is then customized. Okay, so we have a larger icon there. I didn't change it. Of course, we could click here, select a different icon, or even uh, again, copy the font awesome icon uh, styling. Um, paste that into a text document and then adjust it manually and paste it in here. So we do see a preview here also of the icon applied as well as the size. So if I could adjust this here, which as I mentioned, it doesn't really allow. So I'll take it out and again, three times this time. If I run it, we can see here again, the icon has increased in size and now also within my project. Okay, so the brands form is then ready. Let's have a quick look at the edit fields. Yeah, we manufacture brand image. Let's keep that. And then I will go ahead and close that one. So the final form we have here for the administration at the moment is here the adjustments. And here we have the ID adjustment and the reason. So for this form, I will again just hide here the ID adjustment, leave the reason, and then we have, again, another form ready for our project. Okay, so if I close then this application, what I will then do is then again here within admin, create another folder, and this one I will call products. Okay, so within the admin folder, I now want to move some of these applications that I've just generated into the products folder. So for that, we have here brands, we then have also the where the sorry the manufacturer. So I want to then move those to the products folder. Okay, and then within products, what we want to do now is create a new application, and I will start with first of all the grid application. And what we will do then is select then the table 
items using the default selection and then go create. Okay, I'll go new application again. And this time I'll create the form for the table items. Okay, so we now have a form and a grid which have been created separately. So we don't have that linkage which we had initially within the group created applications, okay? So we don't have here now the add new button and there is no edits here anymore. Okay, so we need to actually add that ourselves. But what we're going to do is create two item forms, one for insertion and one for the edit of products. Okay, so they will be, both be different. But first of all, what we will do is make preparations to these applications. So for the items, again, I will, I will this time leave the search. I will remove the details, the summary and the chart. Now, of course, we can enable the details if you wanted to or even create a separate application and use that as the detail application. So that is, uh, in, my, in my personal opinion, a better option. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and save this. And then we can run this application again. Now we can see, okay, so we need to make adjustments to the brand and the layout of this. So let's go ahead here, first of all, edit fields. So the ID item we don't need. The brand, I will move that up. The image, I actually have the image over on the left-hand side. Then we have the item name, purchase price, as well as the selling price. Okay, so we need to then adjust here, first of all, the brand ID and select automatic and adjust the lookup for first of all the brands table, select the brand name, select yes, define the connection, we can then save that. Okay, then we also have here the purchase price and selling price. So here we can, for instance, make adjustments to the decimal precision, which is good too. We can then also define currency format, which I will go ahead and do. We also then have purchase price, here again, I will define the currency format and the decimal precision again too. Now, I actually, because this is a warehouse and we have multiple countries, I will remove the currency format because the currency format will actually go on your local currency. So I will remove that. Otherwise that could avoid, um, have some confusion in different countries when viewing the project. Okay, so our layout's now slightly adjusted. We could make further adjustments if we wanted to. But first of all, what we want to do is get on and create this form, adjust the form, and then the linkage between them. Okay, so for the form, again, here I'll come to Edit Fields. I will adjust the ID item. I'll move the brand ID up to the top. The image I'll leave at the bottom, and then save, and then access the fields. Okay, so now for the brand ID, again, we select here the auto lookup, select the brands table, the name, choose the connection, and I will again use title, save. Now for the purchase price, here I will, you have the option of displaying a calculator. I do like this. Uh, in some situations, I do actually enable this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, and I will also auto complete with zeros, okay? Because then it's a purchase price and selling price. We're going to apply the same. Now here again, I will apply a, cal a calculator and auto complete with zeros. Okay, so now if I run that, we can then see the form in its current status. We have here the brand selected, the item displayed, the purchase price, the selling price. We have a calculator here also. We have the image and we have here again, the font awesome icon. So again, if I open my text editor where I had copied that previously, I can again come here to the image and I can again make adjustments to that or select the one. There we go. Save that. And again, now we'll have a large image here for the upload space. And we could make adjustments to the size, the color and so forth. Most of that is either within the theme and templating system, which we won't be touching during this project, I'm afraid. Okay, so that's first of all the form ready. Now for the basic insert form. So what I want to do now, first of all, is I'm going to go to home. I will close this form 
and I will now select it and I will then go copy. Sorry, copy up here next to it, not down the bottom. If you go copy here down the bottom, you actually copy it to another project. So we need to use the copy here on the right. So I'm going to now call this form TB items insert and go OK. OK, so now I will go ahead and open both of these forms. Click Edit. And for the insert form, the first thing I will do is here on events, on application init, we'll here set the application config. So this macro, if I come here to the right to macros, your SC APL conf, we can see here the help information as well as the option to apply this. So here, if I would have searched here, I could select it and we will have the definition or the script macro ready to use. Now these macros do save a ton of time. They are very, very, very good and worth worth looking into. So do check out here the help and have a look at them and use them throughout your project. You will save so much time and learn to use script case so much better. Okay, so when we add a macro here, you notice that we do not finish the line. So always need to finish the line here when adding a macro. That's very important, okay? Now we then have here the macro which we are using and then we have the values defined which we can then de apply. So here I have then the form name which is then here the application. So this is then always the name that we apply for the form. We have then the property. So that would in this case be start. When we start the application, we want to define a new value. So then all fields will be new this form will not start in edit mode, for instance. Okay, so I'm gonna save that. And then what we can do is come here to grid insert, the grid items. And here I will go to buttons, create a new button. And here I will call it insert items. Okay, and here for the type, we can then create either a link, with between the applications, which we will do in a moment. But for the time being, what we want to do is actually create a PHP button. And instead of actually clicking on this button and having the linkage there, we want to separate the two because we have the insert items and the edit items. Okay, so if I now select PHP and create, we can then this time use a redirection on click of this button. So here in the PHP code, click on that. And then here I will apply the SC redirect macro, indicate the form to which we will be redirecting and where this will occur, so self. So when we click on this button, it will change the grid application to the form application. Okay, so now I can save that. And then we can make some adjustments here to the, um, the button that we've just applied. So we can change here, first of all, the label. So I will say here, add item or add product even. We can add a hint here also, add items to the product list. This will then be displayed on hover. We can even in include a confirmation message. Okay, so when we click this, we can present a confirmation message if they are positive that they want to proceed and so on. So at the top here, we can then also apply the font awesome icon, so again here, we can add an icon, so I'll just go for a plus symbol. And here you use the plus sign and the styling, we can change to that also. So here I will choose PayPal, like the blue, and then we can run the grid application again. And we have now here our add product. Now clicking on this won't do anything yet because we haven't generated this form yet. So we'll do that in a moment. But first of all, let's go ahead here into the toolbar and move this button here over to the right hand side. And then what we want to do is then come here to application links. And here I will create a new link and it will be an edit link. So next. And then here we select the form TV items and next. And we pass here the ID item, which is then the field ID item and confirm. Okay. so. We have the options here to display within the same window, which we want to do. We could also display in another window, in an iframe, 
open a parent or within a modal window. So we will leave this as it is, open in the same window. We can then display the button on the grid toolbar. So we do want to do that. And we don't want to enable insert button on target application. We don't want to enable the update or delete. We can disable these if we so choose. Otherwise, for this case, we do not want to insert new items. We have here the form TV inserts. Again, here the insert item button, which we've just added. So we need to make sure that's unchecked. And then we can click Save. So now if I go Run and run the grid application again, and in the background script case, I'll go ahead and generate the source code, and that will generate then the outdated applications. So now here within the grid, and we now have here the Add New button here. So we need to remove this. Click Add Product. We have our, our Add Item form, which we just created. We can click Cancel. We can go back. Okay, and then here, we can then also edit the applications which we have. Okay, so back in script case, we want to remove here the Add New button. Let's come back here. We can close the Generate Source Code. So back in script case, then we need to access here the application links and we can make adjustments here to the properties of the link we just created. And now to remove here the add new button, which keeps popping up, we select here no. And then I click save and then run the grid application again. We can now see within the grid application that the add new button has now gone. Okay, so that is actually within here the properties of the application links. So again, application links, properties, and then here the button new. Else, when enabled, we will have the options here to make adjustments to the new button, as well as then here within the toolbar. This option here is then also always displayed, even though we had removed it. So the button form buttons we had just removed, this would then also always be displayed within the grid application, unless correctly configured in the alternative application. Okay, so now we have our insert ready. So now if I close these, we can then make some further adjustments to our projects by creating some more applications. But that will happen in part two of this video, I'm afraid. So we will continue again shortly. Do continue watching and see how we continue to construct or develop this project within Scriptcase. So thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you again in the next video.